Welcome to today's Bible study for New Macedonia Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Randall Baker. Today we will be on uh, Numbers chapter 26, and as usual, we'll begin in chapter 1, uh, verse 1 rather, and uh, read a block of text and then go back in and try to explain it. Before uh, we get into that, though, I'd like to tell you that I am uh, from New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky, and I am Pastor Randall Baker. If you would like to send in a uh, love offering, a gift of any type for the church, for the running of the church, for the building fund, for the ladies club, or for the Sunday school, also mark it as such and send in a P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky 41001. Also, just to keep in mind uh, some prayers of some folks that are struggling, uh, C.A. Griffith has up some issues, and Geneva Harold, Elsie Turner, uh, Truman Turner and his family, uh, John and Faye Little also having some issues, but they're not doing too bad, I don't think, just having uh, some sort of issues. Keep them in your prayers, though. Nancy Combs, Lucy Mays, uh, Ruth Eads, uh, Pam Baker and her mother, Millie, uh, both struggling with some things, and also always the sick and in need. And the elderly, of course, the widows, the widowers. Uh, keep our church in prayer, the congregation of our church, and, uh, and above all, as always, keep the lost in your prayers. Let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for all the many, many great gifts you give us, all the many days you've given us before, Lord, and the ones you'll give us after, and the blessings you'll give us after today, Lord, and we thank you for it. We just ask you to bless be with us. Bless those prayer requests made uh, earlier, Lord, and uh, just bless them in your own big way, Lord. We know that you know better than we do, and we know that you can do all things. There's nothing too big or too small for you, Lord, and we thank you for it. We ask you to bless our Bible study today on uh, Numbers chapter 26. Lord, just increase our knowledge and be your will. Just give us understanding. Just let us understand what you would have us to know, Lord, that we can use it in some way to, to glorify your holy name. And we'll thank you for it. Give you all the glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. And amen. As I said, we're going to be in Numbers chapter 26, verse 1. And uh, we'll read, a, read uh, 1 through 4, and then we'll go back in and try to explain that. Some, it says uh, in Numbers 26, 1, And it came to pass after the plague that the Lord spake unto Moses and to Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel from 20 years old and upward throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war in Israel. And Moses and Eleazar the priest spake with them in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people from 20 years old and upward, as the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt. So, as we see there, God tells Moses to take a, a, another census, a counting of the people. And, uh, and they were to be of uh, age, of war age, or the age to be able to go to battle. Uh, they have to be 20 years old and upward, and uh, they, of course, they had to be a member of the nation of Israel. This is the second time uh, that this kind of a census has been taken of, of the, those ones of war, of war age. And the only difference is that this time, uh, the men in the census... Uh, we're from in chapter uh, Numbers chapter 21. They've all died. All of them have gone on. Everybody in, in that generation is gone. And they couldn't enter into the uh, uh, land of Canaan of their inheritance because they believed those ten spies, those ten wicked spies, instead of the two good spies. And instead of believing God, God said they took it, could take it, and they, those wicked spies said they couldn't. Uh, and now, though, now they were getting ready to take the land of Canaan. They were getting ready to go over Jordan into the land. They were just outside of Jericho on the east side, on the opposite side of Jericho River. Now, when they cross the, Jer the Jordan, they will be in the land of promise, the land that was promised to them by God. And Jericho will be the first city that they will take. Verses 5 through 11. This is a long chapter today, so I'm going to try to hurry through it just a little bit. Chapter 5 through, uh, verse 5 through 11 of chapter 26, rather, says, Reuben, the eldest son of Israel, the children of Reuben, Hanok, of whom cometh the family of the Hanokites, of Pala, the family of the Palatites, of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmonites. These are the family 
of the Reubenites, and they were numbered of them were forty, and the number, and they that were numbered of them were forty and three thousand and seven hundred and thirty, and the sons of Paula, Paulu rather, Eliab, and the sons of Eliab, uh, Nimuel, and Dathan, and Abiram. That is that Dathan and Abiram, which were famous in the congregation, who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah, when they strove against the Lord. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah when that company died. What, what time the fire devoured 250 men, and they became a sign. Notwithstanding, the children of Korah died not. So all the children of them didn't die, obviously. The first family of census is taken of the tribe of Reuben. Now, the firstborn of Jacob was Reuben. And uh, Reuben had four sons, uh, Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. Now, in this sentence, in this sentence, the men of uh, fighting age uh, were numbered, and uh, there were 43,730. And that was in this uh, census. Now, in the first census that were taken, and you can see that in Numbers chapter uh, uh, 1, it says uh, that there were 46,500. So it is a couple of thousand less than they had with the other generation. Now, this chapter goes on to follow the line of Paulus, one of the, Paulo rather, one of the sons of Reuben, goes to Eli, Elab, and then to Nemuel, and then to Dathan and Abiram, Abiram. and Dathan and Abiram were uh, among those men that, uh, that withstood Moses, that came up against Moses and Aaron and said that God didn't choose them, that they took too much on. They were along with a man named Korah, and in Numbers uh, chapter 16, uh, they were taken down alive into that pit when the earth opened up and swallowed them. And then the other 250 men that were involved in it, they were killed by fire. Now, these rebels were made a sign. They were made a token that, uh, that not to rebel against God and not to rebel against those that God had put in charge. Now, now as I mentioned earlier, God didn't kill all of the house of Korah, obviously, and the ones that were involved were not, were not killed. God's, God is a merciful God, and He's a just God. He just don't kill people when He feels like it. Verse 12 through 14 uh, talks about the, about the tribe of Simeon. It says, The sons of Simeon, after their families of Nemuel, the family of the Nemuelites, of Jamin, the family of Jaminites, of Jachin, the family of the Jachinites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites, of Shalil, the family of the Shalulites, Shaluel, rather, the family of the Shalulites. These are the families of the Simeonites, 20 and 2,200. Now, uh, next here we're talking about the family of Simeon, and this has got some interesting things about it. And, uh, and uh, who's named in there as having five sons, which uh, the Bible says is Nemuel, Jamin, Jachin, Zerah, and Shal, uh, Shael. Shael. Now, the two, two odd or different things about the Simeon census is that, number one, when Simeon's sons uh, were named in uh, Genesis 46.10 and again in, in uh, Exodus 6.15, he, he said it's to be, have six sons, one of them named Ohad, and he's not named in this chapter right here or not mentioned again in this uh, in, in Numbers or ever again, I don't think, in Numbers 26, maybe, uh, maybe just because he died childless and he had no descendants to include in the census. Maybe there was no one left of the tribe of Simeon there, of, of, of Ohad's uh, descendants. And the second thing that uh, was odd is the number of men, uh, 20 and older, in uh, Numbers 26. And that number is 22,200, but in Numbers 1, they had 59,300. Now, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a loss of, of 37,100 people. Now, now, it is a different generation. It's not just that those many people died, but, uh, uh, I mean, all that other generation died, but uh, you would think that they would have rebuilt back about it the same way. Most of the other tribes built back similar or within a couple of thousand, but these, these, these were down 37,000. Now, a lot of them may have died from that plague. Maybe they were involved in that plague from uh, worshiping uh, Baal Peor. That's possible. We just, we just read about that in a couple of verses. But uh, maybe, or uh, the last chapter rather, we read about that. Now, maybe that curse, and, and it even mentioned the curse in the first sec or second verse that we read. 
Maybe that's why he didn't mention him. Maybe him, him and his family died in the curse. It's very possible. Uh, but when Jacob was giving his sons his blessings or his cursings, when he got to Simeon, he said that when he was dying, he said that, that they would be divided, that Simeon and Levi both would be divided and they would scatter them in Israel. And uh, if you, if you uh, read the Bible and read about how it did eventually happen when the nations divided, they were, Simeon was absorbed into the nation of Judah and, and never mentioned again. Maybe this was the beginning of that. Probably, possibly just the diminishing of the nation of Simeon where it began right here. Verse 15 through 18 says this, The children of Gad after their families of Zephon, the family of the Zephonites, of Haggai, the family of the Haggites, of Shumni, the family of the Shumanites, of the Shumanites, of Osni, the family of the Osnites, of Eri, the family of the Erites, of Arad, the family of the Aradites, and of Arili, the family of the Aralites. These are the families of the children of Gad, according to those that were the number of them, 40,500. 40,500. Now, as we read there, Gad had seven sons, Zephon, Haggai, Shunai, Osni, Eri, Arad, and Arali. Now, in the census, in the generation that was just taken, there was 40,500. In the first census from, uh, from uh, Numbers chapter 1, the previous generation, there was 45,650. So there, uh, there are 500, and, I mean, uh, 5,000 is something less. So there, there's a pretty good chunk of them, but nothing like nothing like uh, uh, Simeon was. Verse 19 through 22 says this, The sons of Judah were Ur and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Judah, after their families were of Shelah, the family of the Shelahites, and Perez, the family of the, the Pharisites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites. And the sons of Perez were of, of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, and of Ham, Hamiel, Hamuel, the family of Hamuel, Hamuelites. These are the families of Judah according to those that were numbered of them, three score and sixteen thousand and five hundred. So this is Judah we're talking about here. And Judah had five sons. Three of them he had by his wife, uh, Shua, and that was Onan and Ur and Shelah. Uh, and uh, Onan and Ur both died. Uh, they died pretty young, I suppose. They had no children, I guess. And then uh, Judah had two more sons which were twins by his daughter-in-law, Tamar. Now the sons that he had by Tamar were Pharez and Zerah, or Zara, the Bible says sometimes. And uh, Pharez was a descendant of Joseph, who was the husband of Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ when he was uh, here on earth. Now, uh, this census of Judah, it came out to be 76,000 500. And the previous generation census had been 74,600, so they had gained, gained about 2,100 people. 23 through 25, uh, talking about the tribe of Issachar, and it says, Of the sons of Issachar, after their families, of Tola, the family of the Tolites, of Pua, the family of the Punites, of Jashub, the family of the Jashubites, of Shimron, the family of the Shimronites, these are the families of Issachar according to those that were numbered of them, three score and four thousand and three hundred. So Issachar had had, uh, he had four sons, and those four sons uh, were Tola, Pua, Jashab, and Shimron. And this sentence with them was sixty-four thousand and three hundred. The previous one had been fifty-four thousand and four hundred, so they had almost ten thousand more in theirs. So some lost a few, some gained a few. In uh, verses 26 and 27, the sons of, or the tribe of Zebulun number, and it says, of the sons of Zebulun, after their families, of Sered, the family of the Sardites, of Elon, the family of the Elonites, of Jalil, the family of the Jalilites. These are the families of the Zebulun, of the Zebulites, Zebulonites, according to those that were numbered of them, three score thousand and five thousand. So Zebulun had three sons that we just read, Sered, Elon, and Jalil. 
and the, this census now was 60,500. Previously, it had been 57,400. So they gained, uh, uh, what, 3,000 people, almost 3,000, a little over 3,000, actually. 28 through, uh, 28 through 34 uh, was the tribe of Manasseh, and it says the sons of Joseph, Joseph after their families were Manasseh and Ephraim. Of the sons of Manasseh, of Makar, the family of the Makarites, of Maker begat, and Maker begat Gilead, and Gilead came, and Gilead come the family, and of Gilead, let me try that one more time, of Gilead come the family of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites, of Helek, the family of the Heliites, Heliites, and of the Azrael, the family of the Azraelites, and Shechem, the family of the Shechemites, and Shemida, the family of the Shemidites, and Hefer, the family of the Heferites, and Zelophehad, Zilo Zilo the son of Hefer, had no sons but daughters. And the names of the daughter of Zelophehad were Mala, and Noah, and Hagla, Milka, and Tirsa. These are the families of Manasseh. And those that were numbered of them, <clears throat> 50 and 2,700. So, <clears throat> now, we can assume because Joseph had great possessions and honor, he had great honor and great things in Egypt. He did very well in Egypt and he spent most of his time in Egypt that he didn't have a tribe named after him because he had somewhat of an inheritance there in Egypt. But when Jacob blessed the two sons of Joseph, Joseph of Manasseh and Ephraim, he said that he took them as his own sons. And uh, two tribes then were named after them to replace Joseph. One of them did, and one of them replaced Levi, who God said was his uh, uh, inheritance. Manasseh had one son, Maker, and then eight of Manasseh's grandsons and great-grandsons together were named Gilead, Jezer, uh, Hec Hec Helek, Azrael, Shechem, Shemida, Ephra and Zelophehad. had. That's a hard one to say. And also five great granddaughters of Manasseh, Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Tirsa. Now their census, their census um, was 52,700 and the previous generation had only had 32,300. So they had grown quite, uh, quite a lot. 35 through 37. <clears throat> 35 through 37 is the tribe of Ephraim, and it says, These are the sons of Ephraim, after their families, of Shulatha, the family of the Shulathites, Shuthahites, of Birka, the family of the Bakarites, of Taham, Taham, the family of the Tahanites, and these are the sons of Shuthila, of Eram, the family of the Eranites. These are the families of the sons of Ephraim according to those that were numbered of them 30 and 2,500. These are the sons of Joseph and their families. So Ephraim had three sons, Shuthala, Beker, and Tehan. The son of Shuthala was the grandson of Ephraim, of course his name. His name was Eram. Their census was altogether 32,500. Previously it had been 40,400. Now, I, you know, I guess God increased some of them and decreased some of them, probably according or, dis, or, or uh, because of their disobedience or probably of their obedience. He may have added to their, uh, to their tribes. Of course, we know that uh, Judah was highly favored and that it is, we'll see that it is, it had the very most. 38 through 41, this tribe of Benjamin, it said the sons of Benjamin after their families of Bela, the family of the Beelites, of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelites, of Ahiram, the family of the Hiramites, of Shufan, the family of the Shufanites, of Hupan, Pom, the family of the Hupamites, Hufamites. And the sons of Bela were Ard and Nahum, of Ard, the family of the Ardites, and of Nahum, the family of the Nahumites. These are the sons of Benjamin after their families, and they were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred. So Benjamin had five sons: Bela, Ashbel, uh, Ahiram, Shufam, and Hufam. 
Two of the sons of Bela were included, Ard and Nahum. Nahum. Uh, their census were 45,600. Previously it had been 45, I mean 35,400, so they gained uh, about 10,200 people. So they had a pretty big gain in theirs. A lot of this was to make up, of course, for a low uh, showing of Simeon. Verses 42 and 43 says this, These are the sons of Dan after their families, of Shuham, the family of the Shuhamites, these are the families of Dan after their families. All the families of the Shuhamites, according to those that were numbered of them, were three score and four thousand and four hundred. Dan had one son, Shuham, and their census was sixty-four thousand and four hundred. Previously, it was sixty-two thousand seven hundred. So they they made up almost two thousand. Now it didn't it didn't really matter how many how many sons had been in the family. One son could have gone on to have a vast, vast amount of descendants, which ha certainly happened here with Dan. Uh, so you can't go by just how many uh, uh, they had in their family, how many children. Uh, the tribe of Asher then, from verse 44 through 47, says it's of the children of Asher after their families, of Jemna, the family of the Jemnanites, of Jeshuai, the family of the Jeshuites, of Bariah, the son of the, the, the Bariahites, of the sons of Bariah, of Heber, the family of the Heberites, of Melchiael, the family of the Melchiahites, and the name of the daughters of, of Asher, the daughter of Asher was Sarah. These are the families of the sons of Asher according to those that were numbered of them, who were fifty and three thousand four. So Asher had three sons, Jemna, Jeshua, and Bera, Beria. The uh, two sons of Bera are mentioned, that's Hebrew and, and uh, Mal Malchael, and one daughter of Asher, whose name is Sarah, is also mentioned in this chapter. Their census was 53,400. Previously it was 41,500, so they made up about 12,000, almost 12,000 people. Uh, so they made up a lot of people there from uh, the Simeon tribe, the loss of Simeon tribe. Verses 48 through 50 talk about Naphtali's tribe, and it says, Of the sons of Naphtali, after their families, of Joshua, uh, uh, Jaziel, rather, the family of Jezuelites, of Gunai, the family of Gunites, of Jezer, the family of Jezerites, of Shalem, the family of Shalemites, these are the families of Nephtali according to their families, and they were numbered of them, were, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and four hundred. So Nephtali had four sons, Jajel, Gunai, Jezer, and Shelim. Their census was forty-five thousand four hundred. Previously, it had been fifty-three thousand four hundred. So they lost some. They lost a few, as I said. Some gained quite a lot. Some gained just a little bit. Some lost a fair amount, and some uh, gained. Uh, uh, I mean, lost quite a bit, or, and then lost only a few. Uh, verse fifty-one then says this: These were the number of the children of Israel: six hundred thousand, and a thousand seven hundred and thirty. So the total census added up to 600 and 1,730. Previously, it had been 603,550. So it's not, not too bad off, a, a loss of a little over 2,000. This is not terrible, uh, not terrible amount of difference between the two. Verse 52 through 56 says, And the, land, and the Lord rather spoke unto Moses, saying, Unto these the land shall be divided for inheritance according to the number of names. To many thou shalt give the more inheritance, and to, the, and to few thou shalt give the less inheritance. To every one shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding, the, Lord, the land shall be divided by lot according to the names of the tribes of their fathers they shall inherit. According to the lot shall the possession uh, thereof be divided between many and few. So it's just common sense, the way God divided it up, said the land was to be divided up according to the size of the tribe. It was a big tribe. As Judah was the largest tribe, it would get the largest piece of land. If Simeon was the smallest, which he was, then he would get the, 
he would get the smallest. Now this was the this was in the beginning uh, divided into twelve separate nations after they got each tribe was a nation, and later that would be divided into just two: the northern northern and the southern kingdom. Verses uh, fifty-seven through sixty-one says, uh, and these are they that were numbered of the Levites after their families of Gershon, the family of the Gershonites, of Kohath, the family of the Kohathites, Kohathites, and Merari, the family of the Merarites. These are the families of the Levites, the family of the Libnites, the family of the Hebronites, the family of the Malites, and the family of the Mushites, the family of the Korathites. And Kohath begat Amram, Amram, and the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, who her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. And she bare unto Aram, unto Am, Amram, Aaron and Moses and Miriam, their sister. And unto Aaron was born Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. And Nadab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. So the Levites' genealogy, or, or a part of it, is given here. And the Levi, uh, we can read many times, had three sons, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. In verses 58, uh, some groups of people are mentioned, but it doesn't really tell us who they belong to. If we went back to Numbers chapter 1, it does give us uh, some insight how these are connected to Levites. The Libnites, uh, for one, uh, in the chapter, uh, Numbers chapter 1, Gershon had a son named Libni, so that's where the Libnites came from. The Hebronites, Kohath, had a son named Hebron, so that's obviously where the Hebronites come from. The Malites and the Mushites, uh, Merari had a son named Malai, and he had a son named Mushai. So Kohath was Amram's father, and he married uh, his half-aunt uh, named jo Jochebed, of whom Aaron, Moses, and Miriam were born. Aaron had four sons, uh, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. And Nadab and Abihu were both killed when they offered strange fire before the Lord. And then, of course, uh, uh, the other two brothers, uh, Eleazar and Ithamar, then became the priest. Verse 62 uh, says, and those that were numbered of them were twenty and three thousand, all males from a month old and upward, for they were not numbered among the children of Israel because there was no inheritance, inheritance given them among the children of Israel. So the Levites were counted from one month old, not from twenty years old and upward. So they weren't a fighting age because they weren't counting them to be fighting. They were, they were the priests and they were the tabernacle ministers, the ones that worked in the tabernacle. Uh, so they got no inheritance in Canaan, in the land, uh, because the Lord said that He was their inheritance. He was going to take care of them. They were 23,000 uh, Levites. Now Moses, Miriam, uh, their children, they were all the descendants of Kohath. So they would have been counted among them. And Aaron and his sons were set aside, as we know, as the priests. Verse 63 through 65 says this. These are they that were numbered by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who numbered the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. But among these there was not a man of whom Moses and Aaron the priest numbered, when they numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. And that's talking about Numbers chapter 1. Uh, For the Lord had said of them, They shall surely die in the wilderness, and there was not a, left a man of them, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua the son of Nun. So of all the people counted, of all these people, that all these 601,000 people counted, none were of the same uh, that was in uh, the first group that would be going into the... Uh, into the uh, promised land, of course, except for uh, Caleb and uh, Joshua, the two 
of the two faithful spies. The rest of the spies were evil spies. They brought back an evil report. They were unfaithful and they brought back an evil report. Well, thank you for joining us today for Numbers chapter 26. I encourage you and urge you to go ahead and study uh, Numbers chapter 27 and find out what God has for Israel there. I'm sure there'll be something for you, for you in there if you study and, and do that because God promises blessings for those that will read and study His Word. Again, thank you for joining us and let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this 26th chapter of Numbers. We thank you for all you do for us, the many, many wonderful things you do for us, giving us this Bible, Lord, giving us this book of Numbers, giving us all of the books of the Bible. Just thank you for all those wonderful things that you've given us, Lord, all these many, many truths and, and all these many stories, Lord, and illustrations in there to show us what you would have us to do, Lord. And we thank you. We ask you to forgive us that we don't do everything that we're supposed to do, Lord, and not to be what uh, uh, you would have us to be. But continue to bless us. Continue to work with us. Continue to give us that desire to learn and study your word, Lord, so that we might be able to please you in some way and we'll thank you for it we'll give you all the glory all the praise and all the honor in jesus christ's name we do pray and amen <laughs>